Oh, it's gonna be 88 degrees for the high today. You gotta stay hydrated. I know a lot of people are like, 88, that's not awful. Oh, when you in the south, with the humidity being what it is, 88's a monster. Okay, so what I want to come out of today's round, well number one, I really want to do um, this first test run of the Cobra irons and I want to see how they stack up to the Australian blades, number two, how they stack up to my modern clubs, and just number three, you know, how do they perform, do I like them, uh, are, they, are they meshing with my style and my swing? But another thing that I want to do today as far as personal goals is that I want to feel that compression and that solidness. With, with all of my shots, um, regardless of where they go, where they end up, what the distances are, you know, whether I'm putting for birdie or triple bogey, uh, I just want to make sure that every shot I hit, every shot that I feel uh, is solid. And solid is compression. And I used to equate compression with speed, and that still plays a role. Uh, and I equated speed with effort swing at it, hit it. So I'm really trying to reprogram my brain to where I equate compression with that forward shaft lane. not winning any grand titles for length today. Well, I'm kind of screwed here. Let's see. There's the ball. Tree. Flag behind tree. I'm just going to have to pitch something out to the right. I'm blocked out. Probably just going to play a low seven iron. Yep, right in the fairway. I'm going to play a nice little three-quarter pitching wedge in there. I just love the fact that this is called a 10 iron instead of a pitching wedge. I just think that's so fitting. It's perfect. And these clubs are just awesome. These have much better shafts in them than the Dunlop Maxfly Australian blades I played, which were X100s. These are S300s, so they're more suited to me, more my speed. Back right. Great contact though, back right. The last shot was certainly a great example of when it's done right, but um, you know, I've got a putt now to try and save my par after my pitch out. Let's see how it goes. I'm gonna try and roll it right over that dark spot. Now that I've got my spot, I'm just gonna focus on what speed I need to get it there. short. Left it short. Uh, I got in a little bit of practice on the green uh, for about five minutes before starting my round. It's the beginning of the round. These greens are fairly slow. It's kind of wet out here even though it's going to be like 85 degrees today. Uh, so I'll chalk that one up to not really having a good feel for the speed, but the line was good, and I made my bogey putt, which was a, a four-footer after that. So, you know, I'll take it. That's good. All right, this is where things get really nuts. Okay, this is a par three. I normally play from the whites here. However, today I'm playing from the blue tees. Uh, from the whites, this is about a 160-yard shot. From these blues, I just shot it. It's 223 yards to that flag into the wind. But with this set, this is a perfect time to do this little experiment. I have 
this tiny little one iron. Look at the face on that. Uh, it's a perfect time to try this um, and maybe demystify some of the butthole puckering intensity that people feel when they stand up with a tiny little blade and a long shot into the wind. Let's see if I can pull this off. Uh, everybody always says, when it's breezy, swing easy. I like that idea all the time. Man, I left it right and banked off of that tree, but I didn't hit it bad. I just, I, it, it just stayed out right on me. It came back into the middle of the fairway. That's fine. I wasn't expecting to uh, have a good shot at par on this hole anyway. So, uh, but I didn't hit it bad. It wasn't bad. It was just blocked. Got a pretty short little pitch left into the green. Again, pin cut really close to the front. Number one rule: get the ball on the green. I can't be scared to go past the flag a little bit more toward the middle of the green because if I come up trying to get cute and, and I leave it a little short, this false front is going to stop the ball right in its tracks, possibly roll back down, and then I'll be left with an even tougher shot. Number one rule, get it on the green. So I've got a surprise for you guys today. Uh, I hinted at it in the last video in the beginning I said hey wait till the end of the video and then you'll get a hint for the surprise at the end of that video that relates to this video so the hint at the end of it was 97 masters 1997 masters now the masters is not being played this year because of the COVID-19 virus and everything being shut down so in honor of the masters which is my favorite golf tournament I've got something special for you guys and something special for me that I have not tried yet. I haven't hit a single shot with it. Check this out. This is the King Cobra 9 degree deep face steel head steel shafted driver that Tiger Woods used in the 1997 Masters when he won 313 yard par 4 from the Blues which is where I'm playing today. No chance I get it home, not worried about distance, just want to hit this club. It's a classic and put it out there. Uh, the head on this one I think is about 250 cc's and modern drivers are 460 cc's. Persimmons are about 195. You do the math, it's a big difference. Let's see if it makes a big difference in performance. Now I'm going to tee this up a little low. You normally want the ball about, about half and half with the top line splitting the middle of the golf ball, that's kind of a standard. I'm teeing it up a little lower than that and I have to tee it up even lower than normal because the face on this club is not nearly as, as tall. So we'll see how it goes. Might try a couple of balls here, let's see. One was enough. That's all I need. That was awesome. It felt really buttery and smooth, and I love the weight of the steel shaft and clubs. Uh, I'm never going back to graphite. It's just too light. I love this weight, and this is actually a rifle shaft. This is a Rocket Sensacore, and it's actually in regular flex, which is a little bit softer than normal for me. But the weight, I love the weight, man. I want that. I don't want my clubs to be so light that I can't be aware of where they are in space. This is, um, this is way further up here than I expect. Um, there is a granite tee marker beside the tee box up there that's actually in front of the whites, and I'm playing the blues today. Uh, I think I paced it off. It's about 25 yards from that granite tee marker back to the blues. So I'm gonna shoot back down the fairway now and see what kind of yardage. Also, this is uphill and the grass has not been mowed. Uh, the grass out here really needs to be mowed. So there wasn't a whole lot of roll to this one. It was pretty much mostly carry. Let's see what we get. That can't be right. I'm reading 268 back to that stone. 
plus another 25 yards, 290-ish, 293, something. There's no way. It can't be right. I'm not going to accept that because I normally do not drive the ball that far. Uh, we'll see how the day goes. I'll have to shoot a different one to check. But, I mean, it was a really good drive regardless. 78 yards to the flag. I got green in front of it, so really I only need somewhere between a 72 and 75-yard shot. Actually, that was a perfect shot. I'm sitting dead pin high. I am 90 degrees to the line of the fairway right now. Um, I hit about a yard and a half before the flag, checked and sat right down. I, that, that was a perfect shot. I just pulled it a little bit left, but honestly, I wanted to be able to miss this one a little bit left or a little bit short because that has the most green to work with. So um, that's a good leave. I'll take it. That's a par, I'll take it. Not to mention, that's a fairway and a green in regulation. That rarely happens. see my arm sorry um, so basically what I want to say is this ball sat in place there was no bounce forward so this was all carry with that sand wedge and really I'm about two yards if I had flown on the line that I wanted to I'm two to three yards short so this myth about blades when you miss hit them uh, that you get so penalized it's not necessarily true all the time Two inches, two inches from a chip in. That's a pretty good bogey from where I started. Here's another 225 yard, just crippling par three. I mean, God, I'm gonna try this one iron again and uh, see if the rerun is better than the first time I saw it. Not my best swing, but you know, it's not bad, it's in play. Good shot, best I can do. It's a bogey, but you know, not that bad. It's a long par three. Man, not bad. I mean, you can't make pars on every hole when you're like me. <laughs> Overall, these clubs performed great. I uh, love the feel of them. They definitely had a soft feel. They almost felt like forged, even though these are a mild steel that uses a soft casting process. 
but the feel coming off the club face when you hit it just right was sweet. Miss hits were not that awful. They really didn't penalize you that much. You didn't feel a shockwave run up through your arm, even with the one iron. And I was surprised at my progress with the one iron. I hit it a couple of times this day, and uh, it felt pretty great. And they weren't awful. They weren't high performance. I definitely didn't look like I was going to be on the PGA Tour next week. But overall, I mean, I, I really like these clubs a lot. The weight of them was, was really substantial. They felt heavier than modern irons, and I like that. I personally and just not into the light clubs. Everybody says you can swing them faster and get more speed. The lightweight stuff, I like to feel the weight. I like to know that something's on the end of this stick that I'm swinging and that I can just rely on the weight of that club to create the speed for me once I heave it up in the air and let it come back down. How do they compare to the Dunlop Max Fly Australian Blades? Uh, it's kind of weird because the shafts in the Dunlop Max Fly Australian Blades are a little bit too stiff for me and I don't feel like I can generate quite as much speed through the flex and unflex of the shaft whereas the shafts and the cobra blades were much more in line with what I'm used to. Uh, so it's kind of a wash at this point. I'll continue to play back and forth with both sets and see how they how they react and how they perform on course and you know what kind of scores and what kind of shots I get with them. But ultimately I think I prefer the head on the Max 5 blade uh, a little bit maybe over the Cobra blades, but I definitely prefer the shafts and the Cobra blades. As far as the 1997 Masters Tiger Woods Woods, <laughs> the King Cobra deep face 9 degree driver and matching 3 wood that's 15 degrees with steel shafts, um, I really like these woods. I got a little bit in with them today. It wasn't my best day swinging the driver, uh, but at, at the same time, it wasn't my worst day either. I had some really good shots, and then I had some that weren't so great. But at the end of it, I love these woods. I love these clubs. It was a great day.